Let's see how good you really are. Terry Silver is one of the all-time great movie villains. Intelligent, charming, manipulative, violent. In the Cobra Kai series, Daniel calls him a psychopath. But is Terry Silver really a psychopath? Today, we're going to use Dr. Robert Hare's criteria to see if Terry Silver is a clinical psychopath. And if he is, I'll go over what that means for his character from Karate Kid 3 to Cobra Kai Season 5 and beyond. I'm Ken Cole, and if you're a fan of Cobra Kai, The Karate Kid, or movies in general, you've come to the right place. As you may know, the character of Terry Silver is one of my all-time favorites, and I've made a number of videos about him, exploring what makes him tick, especially a video called What Terry Silver Wants. This is a follow-up to that video, and today we're going to dig deep into Terry's psychology, drilling to the core of Terry Silver with scientific research into a very real personality disorder called psychopathy. A diagnosed psychopath is not the same as someone who's, quote, psycho or psychotic. While serial killers are often psychopaths, the vast majority of psychopaths are not serial killers or scenery-chewing movie villains. It's estimated that at least 1-2% to 2 of the population could be psychopaths. That's about 1 out of every 50 people, and all of us will have at least one bad experience with a psychopath in our lives. And they pop up everywhere, from business to politics to bad romantic relationships. Some are verbal abusers, some are physical abusers, and often, they're con artists. See where I'm going, Terry Silver fans? Bet your ass. Now a disclaimer, I'm not a psychologist, so please don't use this video to diagnose a person in your life. If you feel like someone you know could be a psychopath, please contact a qualified professional who can help your situation. If you're interested in the topic of psychopaths, Dr. Robert Hare is one of the world's foremost experts, and I have a link to his book, Without Conscience, in the description. This book tells us how we can identify psychopaths in our lives, and we'll use it to analyze good old Terry Silver. If you buy the book with the link in the description, it'll help support my channel, so thank you. So what is a psychopath? The title of Dr. Hare's book puts it simply, a psychopath is a person without a conscience. They get gratification at someone else's expense, and they don't experience emotion the same way as everyone else. Now, this is different from someone who's, quote, crazy or insane or psycho. Psychopaths are not crazy. They're actually considered legally sane and can tell the difference between right and wrong. They just don't care. If you've heard the term sociopath, that's pretty much the same thing as a psychopath. Some famous real-life psychopaths are Ted Bundy, an intelligent and charming serial killer, Diane Downs, who killed her children to attract a man who didn't want kids, and Joe Hunt, a fast-talking swindler who set up schemes to con wealthy people out of money and was associated with two murders. Some examples of psychopaths in movies are Max Cady in Cape Fear, played by Robert De Niro. Your mommy's not happy. And you know what? You're not happy. Are you? No, I'm not. You thought about me last night, didn't you? Holly Sargis in Badlands, played by Sissy Spacek. He wanted to die with me, and I dreamed of being lost forever in his arms. The whole time, the only thing I did wrong was throwing out my fish when he got sick. Later, I got a new one, but this incident kept on bothering me, and I turned to Kit. Well, you sick. You couldn't do much about that. Not. And Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, played by Michael Douglas. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. As for Terry Silver, Daniel LaRusso, the former Karate Kid himself, calls Terry Silver a psychopath. In season four of Cobra Kai, Terry Silver makes an unannounced visit to Daniel to apologize for his past behavior. If I could go back and undo it all, I would. All I can say now is I'm truly sorry. Daniel calls Terry a psychopath. Later in the convenience store, Daniel calls him You're a con man manipulating people to turn them into something that they're not. So is Daniel right? Let's look at Dr. Hare's qualities of a psychopath. And remember, just one or two of these qualities isn't enough. You need to see most or all of these qualities together in one person, and then you might have a psychopath on your hands. 
Keep Terry Silver in mind as we go through these. Psychopaths are glib and superficial. Psychopaths are egocentric and grandiose. Psychopaths lack remorse and guilt, though they'll pretend to be sorry and give superficial apologies to manipulate people. Psychopaths lack empathy. Psychopaths are deceitful and manipulative. Psychopaths have shallow emotions. Psychopaths are impulsive. Psychopaths have poor behavioral controls. Psychopaths have a need for excitement. Psychopaths lack responsibility. Most psychopaths have early behavioral problems, and adult psychopaths exhibit antisocial behavior. Let me know in the comments how you think Terry Silver did, and we can go even deeper. Many psychopaths abuse drugs or alcohol. Though a chunk of psychopaths end up in jail, many intelligent and organized psychopaths are able to evade the law. They thrive in the business, political, financial, and legal professions. Because they have higher income and social status, their crimes are about stealing and conning people out of money, not so much about violence. Sometimes these are called successful psychopaths or subcriminal psychopaths. Also, interestingly, around the age of 40, some psychopaths can appear to change their ways. This is because they get burned out from their previous methods of excitement. While they seem not as bad anymore, deep down, they're the same. They've just gotten better at hiding their bad behavior and blending into society. So, is Terry Silver a psychopath? Let's start with the character as originally portrayed in Karate Kid 3 by the great Thomas Ian Griffith. As presented, this character is a textbook subcriminal psychopath. He's glib, very well spoken, but often shallow and insincere. You two training for the Olympics or something? Uh, just some tournament. The, the one you won last year? Yeah. Uh, what's it called? It's, uh, the All Valley. Right, good. Good for you. A champion should defend his title. John Kreese told me you had a lot of heart. Oh, yeah? He has a grandiose sense of himself, a would-be aristocrat, living in a Maya-inspired temple with a taste only for the finest cars and clothes. He shows zero remorse for anything, and when he apologizes to Miyagi, it's insincere and meant to manipulate. Is this your student? The champion? Yes. Our apologies to you, too. He has almost no concern for the emotions of anyone else. Even with Kreese, he lies about giving him 100% of the Cobra Kai dojos. I bought 20 locations today, yours, 100%. Before turning around and promising 50% to a kid named Mike Barnes. You got your 50%. He's able to charm, manipulate, and deceive as easily as he breathes. I'm opening the Cobra Kai dojo again. It's time to set things straight. Anytime you want to train, I'll be there for you. His emotions are shallow and a bit erratic. Yes! Ah, here are the dojo keys. What are you talking about? I'll pay you that back rent as soon as I can. Screw the rent. What, do you think I bought that place for the rent? I bought it for you. Mr. Silver? What? Plutonium deal. He impulsively throws his important job as president of Dynatox Industries aside for weeks. For the next few weeks, my business is strictly revenge. Everything is in place, sir. So he can have fun targeting a vulnerable kid and an old man. Though he's a controlled psychopath, he sometimes has poor behavioral control. You think this is the end of it, old man? I'm gonna open Cobra Kai dojos all over this valley! Hell! I might even teach for free! And goes a little over the top. Hey, I like that! Oh, I like that, Johnny! I'm gonna use that! <laughs> Everything he does is for his own pleasure and excitement doing illegal deals, sparring in his mansion, hatching plans, and even getting Daniel to punch a guy and run away. He's irresponsible, again, dropping important company business and breaking into someone's house when he's a company president and public figure. We don't really learn about any early behavioral problems in Karate Kid 3, though as an adult, he exhibits antisocial behavior by disregarding society's rules. He engages in the illegal activity of bribing officials. Bribe them as usual dumping toxic waste, and he enjoys seeing kids physically beaten. There are many more examples, but the key is this. He knows the difference between right and wrong. He just doesn't care. So in Karate Kid 3, Terry's a psychopath. How about in the Cobra Kai series so far, starting with season four? One important detail is that he's now past the age of 40, the age when a lot of psychopaths blend better into society and seem tamer. Cobra Kai Season 4 does present Terry more ambiguously than Karate Kid 3, though interpreting events in a certain way, he still exhibits a lot of psychopathic qualities. For example, his relationship with Cheyenne. 
parents and I are enjoying the journey for now. Taken at face value, Terry has moved on from his past and become a better person, a good boyfriend perhaps. But if he's a psychopath, he hasn't really changed. This outward tofu Terry image he created is all an act. Cheyenne may have thought she was with this great guy, but if Terry's a psychopath, deep down he doesn't feel love or devotion. He just outwardly acts like he does to get something. It could be sex, it could be excitement, or in Terry's case, he might want to be associated with Cheyenne's mindfulness app. Terrence was kind enough to host the launch of my new mindfulness app. If he's still building his goody-goody philanthropy image, you'll notice that shortly after the app launch party, Terry ghosts Cheyenne. She sends him tons of texts begging him to call her, but he doesn't care and just puts the phone down. This interpretation would point to Terry as a psychopath. When Terry goes to Miyagi-Do to apologize to Daniel, My past behavior was <laughs> inexcusable. Again, we could take it at face value that he's a changed person, sincerely trying to apologize. If he's a psychopath, though, he would never be sorry for anything, and this would be a fake apology. You be the judge, though to me, he says the right words, but the apology rings hollow. If I could go back and undo it all, I would. Considering he shows up unannounced out of the blue with John Kreese at his side and purposely wearing the same style clothes, chain, and ponytail as in Karate Kid 3. He could have come by himself to apologize to Daniel as humble Tofu Terry at his house or dealership, but he didn't do that. In fact, he's practically intimidating Daniel into accepting his apology. I'm truly sorry. And I assure you, I'm not that man anymore. And clearly Daniel doesn't buy it. But if you don't get off my property right now, I swear to God. Insincere apologies intended to manipulate are straight from Psychopath 101. And Daniel's fiery response would bother Terry if he was a psychopath because he'd perceive it as an insult and Terry didn't win the confrontation. Other ambiguous things might include the backstory in Vietnam. Young Terry, or Twig, seems to show fear in extreme situations. But psychopaths don't actually experience fear, along with other emotions. However, Twig's outbursts do show poor behavioral control. It's all my fault! Oh Shut your goddamn mouth, so. so if he's a psychopath, he could be acting scared because that's how he learned to get what he wanted growing up. Another possibility is that Terry's psychopathy didn't fully bloom until the horrific experiences of the Vietnam War. Though other Terry Silver moments are much more clear. Bribing officials toying with Robbie, messing with Daniel's brain, reading Leviathan with secret ambitions, having a grandiose sense of self, and ambushing Johnny are all psychopathic. A psychopath would likely use drugs. I was so hopped up on cocaine, revenge. And would enjoy provoking Johnny by giving money to and making a pass at Shannon. She is a special lady. Listen to the speech Terry gives his students about caring what other people think. What do we learn? Don't let your opponent think whatever they want. Make them think what you want them to think. If they think you're weak, that's when you can surprise them with your strength. This lesson would be applauded by all con artists. What about the famous stingray scene? I'd all do anything, please. In the first part of the scene, Terry drinks and talks to himself. I prove my loyalty. <laughs> Taken on its face, it looks like Terry is emotionally tortured by what Kreese said. You know, I thought you knew better than to question. But if Terry's a psychopath, he wouldn't feel shame, remorse, or guilt, or the emotional need to please John Kreese. He would, however, be bothered by perceived insults. But you need to fall back in line and follow my lead. And that he didn't win the contest of wills with John Kreese. So that part is up to your interpretation. Though the next part where he beats up Stingray... I think we can all agree by now, a psychopath would have no problem beating up Stingray impulsively for fun or because he wanted to get something out of it. But you gotta do something for me. Again, if Terry's a psychopath, he knows that society thinks beating up Stingray is wrong. Terry just doesn't care. And by calling the cops and pointing the finger at Crease, What did you do? It's behind your back. Terry understands right from wrong. The whole sequence shows that he has no conscience and no desire to adhere to society's rules. So here's the key for the Cobra Kai series. If you interpret Terry as being sincerely changed in season four, that he was a decent person in a solid relationship, that he felt guilty about the events of Karate Kid 3. It sounds insane just talking about it. 
was sincere in his apology to Daniel. I'm truly sorry. That he felt personal devotion to Kreese. I thought this is what you wanted. And was emotionally affected by his put downs. You don't mind, do you? No, Captain. Then you probably think he's less of a psychopath. However, if you think Tofu Terry was all for show, that he was leading Cheyenne on, that he was constantly deceiving and manipulating everyone around him, including John Kreese, that everything he did was for his own self-gratification and to fulfill his own grandiose sense of self, then you probably do think he's a psychopath. And if he's a psychopath, in season five and beyond, expect him to keep charming people, manipulating and deceiving. He'll only do things for his own self-gratification and will have no loyalty to anyone. He views himself as the most important person in the universe. He'll never be sorry, and he'll never do something because it's the right thing to do. In Karate Kid 3, when he said, I've always lived my life by the rule, if you get, you give. That was a lie, because if Terry Silver gets, he just wants to get more. And for me, that's the appeal of Terry Silver as a villain. He's entertaining because he uses all of these qualities to pull off master deceptions and become more powerful. I believe it's the qualities of a psychopath that actually keep Terry grounded and relatable as a character. All of us are going to deal with at least one psychopath in our lives, whether it's a boss, a lawyer, or a romantic interest. Terry Silver being a psychopath is a fascinating look at a problem in our society, how charismatic, intelligent, and dangerous con artists can threaten vulnerable and unsuspecting people. I think the character of Terry Silver is always more interesting when he sticks close to his psychopathic spine. And luckily, we have Thomasine Griffith to play all his nuances brilliantly. So I hope that in season five and beyond, Terry Silver's psychopathy, first seen in Karate Kid 3, is explored to all of its entertaining and thought-provoking potential. Do you think you've personally known a psychopath? Don't give us any names. Do you think Terry Silver is a psychopath? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy Terry Silver, the next thing you should watch is Cobra Cole, my new comedy where I work for someone who might be Terry Silver and try to get help from my cousin, played by David Shatra, Tom Cole on Cobra Kai. If you like Cobra Kai, you won't want to miss Cobra Cole, and you can check it out right now. See you next time.